Welcome to another episode of TLA. This week, TLA and Nick Gita hold a mini seminar on tips to land king salmon from a kayak. This erratic, hard fighting fish is one of the top challenges of kayak fishermen to land. Stay tuned to learn about the common mistakes to avoid and techniques to increase your odds of landing a large king Chinook salmon from a kayak. It is seven o'clock and we are going to get started. Anyone just come in, come in. Um, uh, if for everybody else, just go ahead and turn off your, your audio for now. Um, at the very end, I will allow you guys uh, some time to you know, throw in your questions and answers and whatever you guys want to ask of us. Um, this, these are mini seminars, basically meaning that they're not full wise seminars where we're gonna go talk about everything and everything you need to know. Uh, these are basically just um, short seminars meant to give you guys um, a quick overview of things you can actually implement on the water like this weekend if you guys are going out for salmon fishing and then um to really help you guys land those seminars so it's, uh, land those fish because um once again i you know i think i just want to give you guys good information right away that you guys can use okay and larger seminars i'll tell you when it's really large seminars and we can have a lot of time for that all right but uh today my uh i'm tla Keith, and if you guys see me on the water um you know don't follow me because i really have no idea what i'm doing just kidding. Uh, today, uh, I'm, I'm co-presenting with Nick. Uh, Nick Gita, he's a good friend of mine, and he's very knowledgeable of salmon fishing. You know, his spirit finds out of it. You know, but he loves salmon, and uh, he's, he's a great friend and a good person to, to help me out. Nick, you want to say any words? Uh, yeah. Hi, I'm Nick. I've been, you know, fishing for four or five years on a kayak. Uh, like he said, I love salmon fishing. Very addictive, you know? Yeah. All right. So, uh... If you guys have been to my seminars before, quick mem uh, quick rundown of myself. I've been fishing for 10 years in the ocean, mainly in the ocean. I will get to fresh water one of these days. Uh, member of NCKA in 2008, tournament director at ARW, um, part of the 2020 NCK fishing team, managing captain, YouTube personality, blog, writer, all that. Stuff. And Nick, this is Nick, and he has some bro hat. Nick, you want to run your portion? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I've been fishing for four or five years in the ocean from a kayak. Um, started with rockfish, moved on to halibut and salmon. Uh, it's a great time to be on the water and I like to stay, make sure I'm safe, make sure everybody's safe. Yeah, uh, I think I think that's where me and Nick kind of are really on page with things is where we're a lot of us are uh, about safety and I think that's always our, our number one priority. And that's a great transition into our, our first seminar and then I'll run through the seminar outline right now. And we're just going to review basic safety and kayak fishing essentials, and I'm not going to take too long on that. If you guys have been with me already, you guys know what it is. Um, these videos will be put online for you guys to review um, afterwards anyway, so you guys can just kind of comb through it as you want. But um, I think basic safety and kayak fishing essentials is super, super important, so I want to at least spend some time on it. And then we're going to go over the three stages of landing salmon, and those three stages, um, and each, each one of these tips are going to fall within one of those three stages, is the hookup, the fight, and the landing. Okay, and you're gonna lose if you're gonna lose a salmon, you're gonna lose it either the hookup, the fighting, somewhere along the line with the fighting or the landing, you know. Um, and we're gonna tell you where the most common mistakes are going to be, okay, and how you can actually uh, do to reduce it. Okay, um, so let's just go over kayak fishing safety. I'll take this one, okay, Nick. Um, so I, like I said, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but you guys should know what kayak uh, safety essentials are: dress for immersion. Um, I think I see like one in four people out there nowadays with, with you know, not proper, dressed properly. Sandals, um, what else is there? Just not, you know, cotton, not dressed to be on the water when it's really cold. And that's a no-no, especially when you're dealing with kayak fishing. Um, personal flotation device, always have a PFD, plan and communication, know, uh, know where you're doing, let other people know. Um, have a fishing buddy at all times if you can, self-rescue. Um, anybody with an audio, please turn it off, okay? Um, know your location, GPS, and, and I always have a compass with you at all times. Understand the weather forecast, meaning um, know what your limits are, how, what you can do. Look for NOAA advisories, such as small craft advisory. Don't go out on those days unless, you know, that's your, if you're able to do that kind of stuff and you read the reports, you know how to do it, then okay. But if you don't know how to do it, just don't do it. Um, know the tide charts, high, low tides, and the tide logs, and if, you know, those things are out of your comfort zone, you probably shouldn't be going. Okay, so I really want to stress all those, those, uh, fishing safety issues first. Uh, anything you want to go over here about, Nick, about this? You want to tell yeah. me that? 
people you talk know, about this. You know, this is probably the most important part right here. You know, make sure you got a VHF radio, BFD, you're dressed properly, and you can read the you know, forecasts and swells and all that stuff. All right. Okay, I'm not gonna go over too much of that. I've been doing it for years and I'll, I'll, everything on my website, you can go for safety and just comb it and I'll have it there. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that alone for now. So we can just jump into the five tips for landing king salmon. Um, we're gonna run through it pretty quickly. I'm gonna leave about 15 minutes at the end so we can all kind of talk together about, you know, what you guys have learned and whether what I'm saying works or doesn't work. Okay. Um, and this is a photo of my friend, Eric Stockwell. He's a, a guy up in Humboldt County, and I asked him if I can use this photo for this. And he's a great guy, a great friend as, as well in, in Northern California, up by Humboldt. And uh, if, you guys, if you guys are ever going up north to visit um, Shelter Cove or Humboldt, you know, here's his, his email right here, on uh, his uh, website right here, and uh, hit that, hit him up, and he, he will put you on time if you're, if you're getting up there, okay? Okay, so tip one. I'm gonna handle this, Nick, and you jump in the next one. Tip one, poor and inadequate terminal tackle. And this comes underneath the hookup section, okay? And what I mean by this is that most times I, I think people lose fish because they have doll hook, Nick fishing lines, or poorly tied knots. And I've seen it happen time and time again. And I think the majority, if you're gonna lose a fish on the hookup, is gonna become because you, you just haven't taken care of your terminal tackle. So you need to kind of do that early on before you leave for that day, make sure all your your, your lines and everything are, are, um, are tied up because when a big fish takes that line and hits it, it's gonna find out where that weak point on your terminal tackle is gonna be, whether it's going to be a, you know, a, an improper a, a line being, uh, um, being tied or not being tied or a nick on your leader line or, or is not sharp enough, the hook's not sharp enough to set the hook, it's gonna find it wherever it is and, and you're gonna lose that fish. So take some time before the day or the day before you go fishing to make sure that all your terminal tackle is like right on point, okay? It's very important, believe me. I made that mistake multiple times. Oh, I should have, oh, nah, forget it. Just did it, boom, I broke my line. Okay, lesson learned. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, okay, this one I see very often, and anybody, Nick, you probably want to jump in on this one. Uh, salmon nets, salmon are very, very large fish. Okay, if you haven't really seen a salmon up close, like a big one, you're going to be in for a surprise, please. They are very big. So I've seen this time and time, I say this every weekend, frankly, at the salmon season, I see people using butterfly nets. I've seen using big five nets. I was like, oh, this is gonna get very interesting when, when they get a large fish on. So use large nets. And when I say use a large net, I mean use, purchase a net that is 35 to 40 inches in diameter. Nick, you want to say anything about this one? Yeah, big nets are good. I have a really big net. It's what, like 44 by 33 or 35? Probably two or three people who have borrowed it already on the water because theirs was too small for the fish they hooked into. Oh, yeah. I, I think this weekend, uh, one of my friends, uh, oh, actually one of my team members on, on CCK fishing team, uh, he hooked up to a really large fish. And his net was actually pretty darn big. But when he, when he saw the size of that fish, he knew that he was, he was uh, outgunned on that. And so, you know, the, the advice I would give here is don't bring a, a knife to a gunfight. <laughs> when, when, you come in, when you come in to play big fish, you know, Bring, bring the big gear, man, because they're not going to put you to the test, right, Nick? Right, that's right. Okay, so. Sure yeah, so do that, okay, guys? Uh, okay, so correct leader length. And I'll tell you about a little bit about this one, is because, and, I, and this is what my recommendation is, and I, this is kind of up for debate, so you guys can talk about this at the end with me, okay, is leaders should not pass five feet. Uh, at least my comfort level, honestly, frankly, is about 3.5 to four feet, and let me tell you why. The first time I started uh, kayak fishing for salmon about maybe about eight years ago or something, I got my first fish and I learned how to party, uh, how to catch a salmon on a party boat. And on a party boat, I think the mooching leader is probably about what, seven feet, Nick? Six, seven feet? Something yeah, like probably. that? They use long leaders on those party boats. Oh, yeah. And so that's why I learned to do it. And then when I caught to my first salmon, I realized I couldn't reach for that because it was like seven feet long. Right. <laughs> and on a kayak, you even it's worse because you really, it just, it just, you just can't reach for it. And, and as you're trying to reach, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to get the fish in and, you know, you're almost feeling like you have to grab that leader to pull it in. And that's really going to cause you to, um, to, uh, to lose that fish. So my, my, my suggestion is to have your leader manageable, especially from a kayak. I would say no more than five feet. Um, anything on that, uh, Nick? Yeah, five feet. Sound, no more than five feet sounds good to me, you know, and Really is more on the kayak. It's based more based off the length of the rod, I think. Also, exactly. 
So we, we can have a little discussion on that at the very end, okay? So let's, uh, let's just move on to that. Um, so Nick, yours? Yeah, so my first time kayak fishing, when I hooked into a, finally hooked into a big salmon, I was you know, super excited. The adrenaline was coming through. My leg was shaking. I was not ready. So our tip two is, and I lost that fish. So our second tip is to stay calm, steady, and patient for, during the fight. Take your time. There's nobody to help you. It's all you. All right. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. There's no help. There's no body system. There's no motor to keep your attention on the line. It's just you and the fish. And that gets pretty much, you know, pretty primal right there. It's just you and the fish, right? And, um, and I think, you know, if you're new to kayak fishing or you're new to just salmon fishing, you'll see it's going to be a very different fish than any other fish you've got, like a, a lingcod or a, um, or a halibut or anything like that. Because those guys, you know, for the most part, they'll just run down. A salmon is so erratic in every single way. They'll fight, they'll pull, they'll jump, they'll do everything, right? And, and having that first time, you're always, your heart's going to be pumping off your chest when you first catch that fish. So, so I think experience really helps in this line where you're, you're able to just calm down yourself, your nerves, right? And then say, okay, let me handle this and think clearly about what I need to do. But um, if, you're, if you're able to have that experience over time, um, you'll definitely be patient and calm. And that's really your best ally when it comes to salmon fishing. Okay? Easier said than done, but it can be. Right. right? Especially when you see that 30 pounder. Holy smokes. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's like, what did I do, Chovy? What did I say? I don't know. I forgot. <laughs> Out the door. Okay. All right. So my tip three, right, is keep tension uh, on the line at all times. And this is the, the second part, which is called the fight, right? And most people who, who caught salmon pretty know, much know this, but, but you got it because California basically says that you have to use barbless hooks, right? And you know what barb is? Is that little triangle at the end of the hook that helps it keeps the, the, the barb, the, the fish in place, right? But California makes you use barbless hooks. And so it's really super easy for the fish to jump off the hook. All it has one head shake, one something, and that hook is off, and the fish is off, right? And so, so what you're gonna do is you need to keep tension on that line. So you keep the, so salmon can jump towards you, and that can, what can do is they can slack the line, right? When, when, they're, when, they're, when that's happening. So as a result is that uh, you can lose the fish if the, line, if the line slacks, right? And so what you wanna do is you wanna keep reeling to keep the tension on, on the hook and on the line. So that's super important when it comes to salmon because a lot of people I've seen in the past who have, have a salmon on the line, they'll feel like, oh my God, my, my line is slacked, right? And all of a sudden, because their line is slacked, what happens is that they think they lost that fish. Not the case at all. If you keep reeling, reeling, reeling in, it just, uh, that line catches up to them and all of a sudden the, the rod loads up again. So it's super important to keep the tension on the line, especially with barbless hooks. So if, the, if you feel tension, you feel slack, it doesn't mean the fish is off. Just keep reeling, keep reeling, keep reeling. Oftentimes it's just that it's jumping or it's, ra it's running towards you, okay? Um, and the next one is, and this is for pedal kayaks, okay? And I wanna, I wanna run into this a little bit. And, and I know we have pedal people and we also have paddle people, right? But this is mainly for pedal people. And by pedaling, I say one of the advantages of, of having a pedal kayak, and this is my friend Tim here and he caught a fish, is that when you pedal, you're able to keep the fish behind you. Your, your kayak is moving forward and so the fish is behind you. And what happens is that it keeps that tension on the hook, and which is a great thing for, 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 for Hobies and, and Native and Jackson, right, right, Nick? Uh, any, other, any other pedal kayaks out there? Uh, I think there's, the, um, what's it called? Uh, there's another company that just came out with a pedal drive that looks a lot like Hobie's pedal drive. Yeah, um, I can't remember what that, what that was, but it really helps because, um, and if you guys kind of YouTube how some of us play, I think YouTube moves video or my video, you'll see that, you know, when we hit, when, we, when, we're, when we're fighting a fish and we and in, initially see that big pump on a, on a kayak, we'll keep pedaling. And the reason why we do that is that we want to, you know, set that hook on that fish. As it's biting, we want to that, that forward motion to set the hook on the thing because that's where you're going to lose the fish if the hook isn't set right. Okay? Yep. So we keep pedaling. And then as the, as the, as the, hip, as the fish takes the, um, the bait, the, it will pop off the downrigger, it will pop the deep six diver, and then, and then we'll, we'll fight, we'll keep pedaling to keep the fish behind us. Okay, and so that's really an advantage that's really great for, for people who have pedals is to keep pedaling, keep pedaling to keep that fish behind you and keep that fish um, tension on the line for at least for Hobies and pedal kayaks. Uh, anything else, Nick, before I jump to the next slide? If you, got the, if you got the pedals, don't stop pedaling, you know? Most of the time I pedal harder when I'm fighting a fish than when I'm trolling. Yeah, 
especially on, especially when you see it bite, don't stop at all. When you first see that bite, don't stop. Keep pedaling so that when that so that fish when it hooks it, it that that hook can set itself in, inside the inside the um the jaw. All right, guys, that's a very important tip. All right, uh, Nick, you're up. So uh, tip four, we got to make sure that drag's properly set. Um, too tight and you'll pull hooks. Too loose and you won't be able to reel the salmon in. So the, the norm is to set your drag 30% of your line test. So if you got 30 pound fluoro, you want to set to like 10 pounds or so. Um, depending on the size of the fish, this could be a little much. Um, we want to make sure our reel is, you know, smooth, nice smooth drag, no jerky drags. That's going to cause our rod to lose tension in the line. All right. Uh, I think this area is also um, up for one for, for debate because, you know, a lot of some people and, and I've had my conversations with people around the campfire and, and friends, you know, and, and each kind of person, it really depends on how, like, how you like to play fish. Some people like to set their drag super loose. Some people like me, I like to set my drag a little tighter um, just to wear out that fish. And because I made sure my terminal tackle was, is everything is like, you know, spot on. So it's not breaking my line or anything. And I'm only setting it at 30% of test line. So no matter what, if I have a solid hook set, it's not going anywhere. It's just running by itself, right? So it's going to tire itself out. So my, 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 I say, you know, set it a little tighter. Some people like to set it a little looser. You know, it all depends on, on, on who, how you guys like to play that fish. Um, you want to run over this one, Nick? Yeah. Oh, keep your thumb off the spool. Um, I made this mistake multiple times on purpose and by accident. Just keep your thumb away from the spool at all times. <laughs> I've seen people fight fish and then they, for some weird reason, they like, they like to like mess around with their thumb. And I was like, don't keep, keep it off the thumb. And they stop, right? But I've seen it happen so many times. It's just like, like this thing is like, can't, like this is like that. Keep yeah. I think what happens is, you know, it's taking a while to, to reel that salmon in. You're not getting, grant, you're not getting much line back and they want to grab the reel and pump it in a little bit, you know? Yeah, just don't do it. Let, let your drag nose a lot better than you do about what to do. So set that drag early on and just kind of let it do its job, you know, guys. And just take it cool, calm. You got this. All right. Yep. All right. Uh, here's a good tip. Someone told me recently, and and this is uh, I'll, I will attest to this one is um, salmon are notorious for playing possum. Okay, they'll get up there and they'll pretend like they're like, hey, I'm spent, and they're not. Okay. So until the net comes out, don't be fooled. The fish still has plenty of fish and fight left in them. And they will make a bunch of erratic bursts before even even thinking about coming to the net. And a lot of times, you know, when the first person sees that first come, that you're not even ready to net that fish on the first try. It's very rare that you're actually being able to net a salmon on the first try, because you'll come up and then they'll see you and then they'll bam, they'll make a big rush and jump and do all types of random things. So um, back to tip two: keep your cool and maintain a steady hand. Expect the unexpected, especially from large fish. The smaller fish are dumb enough and they'll get cat caught but the bigger fish will they figure it out how to get off the hook and they'll figure out how to get out of the hook. Okay. So my tip is don't reach for the fish. And I'll show you what I mean in a video in a little bit. Don't reach for the fish. When a fish is ready, it will come in willingly. Uh, not maybe unwillingly, but it will definitely not fight you on the way in. So it will definitely just come into the net. Okay. So if you're reaching for a fish and you're like trying to like force it in, it's not ready yet. Just keep your time, keep fighting it, let it, let it waste all its power, and then when it's ready, it will come in, and your chances of landing that fish is so much higher, okay? I think, you know, having caught a fish, like the first time, and so you're just, you just want to get that in so that the barb don't pop off, right? It's not your friend if you do that, okay? Mm -hmm. um, All right. Sorry, Kip, um, I'm yeah. kind of late to meeting. Are we asking questions during um, a presentation or after? At the end, we're, we're almost done with the thing. We're going to jump to the end and then you can have all the questions you want. Okay. So I'm, I'm giving a lot of time for that. Awesome. Cool. All right. Um, be mindful of the net mesh, uh, that tangle with hooks, leaders, and terminal tackle. I've lost a really big fish. I spent all day fighting, looking for a fish. I didn't get no bite until the very end of the day at three o'clock when I'm about to head in. A big 20 pound salmon slammed my line. I, got, I fought it for 20 minutes. It was upside down getting ready to be netted. I pull it in, it felt the net, it turned around, it jumped, my hook got caught in the mesh, boom, it's gone. I, I can't tell you how many stories are like that as well. So that's super hard because you're doing it yourself, right? So, mesh, so be mindful of the net meshes, the hooks, the terminal tackle, getting all tangled together. 
it will make you lose the pitch. Um, Nick's gonna talk about this in a little bit. So um, you wanna talk about listening? Nah, we'll talk about this later. Let me jump in this one. Uh, so close the opening of your net to keep the fish from escaping. Um, you know, you got that in the net and like, you're like, yes, I finally got it, right? And the, and the opening of the net is still open. They can jump out. Oh yeah. And they will, <laughs> right? So the minute you get that in, raise that net as high as you can or keep, or somehow close that opening of that, of that net. I just grab the, the net like this and the fish is in here and I close it until it's calm. So there's no jumping out, no, no way of escaping. So close the opening of that net before escape so they, can, they cannot, there's no way they can escape because look at, they're looking for their life. They know, they know what's coming at the end of this battle and you're looking for a meal and, and they'll do anything possible to get off and get out. So be, be uh, prepared for the unexpected. And finally, um, get your net ready. Like I've seen people whose net are not ready and they're fighting a fish and they're not, their net isn't even extended. And so as they're fighting a fish, they're like, oh, smokes, they're, they're trying to extend their net while they're fighting a fish, right? Or, or moving their net from this side to that side. Get, make sure your net is ready before you even fight that fish. So it's fully extended, it's flipped in and everything is, is ready so that when you fight that fish, you just pull it up, okay? So make sure that net's ready. And then uh, secure the, the fish as quickly as possible. And I'll let, um, Make sure that the game clip is tethered on the boat and secure. So I'll let Nick talk about this. Go ahead, Nick. Yeah, so just because you caught a salmon doesn't mean the fight's over. Um, you gotta make sure it's secured to the boat somehow, the kayak. We use heavy duty stringers. Um, doesn't mean it's secure. Uh, in the last two weeks, two stringers have failed on me. The first one, two fish, two big salmon fell off the stringer. So now I keep a length of rope with me on the kayak and I double secure it with the length of rope and the string. What was that, 31 it. and a 30, right, Nick? You lost the 31 and a 30 because a stringer failed on you? Two 30 inches or something like that. Good. There's a bow salmon, those ones are heavy. It, the, the, the thing just came off, right, and just slid right off, right? Just the, too much weight hanging in the water and the rod pulled right out of the hook. So good, good practice is to, if you're going to dip your fish while bleeding, Hold them by the gill plate. Don't hold it by the stringer. All right. Uh, don't sell the fish is in the cooler. For sure. Uh, I'll tell you a funny story, guys, before I think we still have time. Uh, I, and some of you guys know this story about me. It's kind of embarrassing, but it's kind of funny at the same time. <laughs> I, I, had, I had gone out there the whole day, and I caught, like, you know, my, my 30 crabs, no, 10 crabs for the day, right? Legally 10 crabs for the day. And um, I had put it all into my little, you know, diving bag. And I was like, oh man, it's, it's done. And I, I, I clipped it from my kayak so I can make sure I get it in there. And then when I clipped it, I was like, okay, I got all my crabs, I'm ready to go. I take it and I toss it over my board. <laughs> I looked over and I see it start sinking. Like 10 crabs, I worked the whole day just sinking into the... So what did I do? I jumped off my kayak, right? Why wouldn't you jump off your kayak? I jumped off my kayak and I swam down there to go get my crabs. You don't want to be doing that. Would I do that for two salmon? Absolutely, I would do that for two salmon. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but don't put yourself in that position where you have to. I, I'm amazed you didn't jump in for two salmon, Nick. I would have jumped in, dude. I was like, dude, watch my stuff. I'm jumping in. Fell off the game clip and it just sank straight down, gone. I would jump in there, bro. I would swim down to get that thing. I was just like, Keith, look at my kayak. I'll be back. Yeah, I'm just playing. Don't do that. Uh, <laughs> but no make sure you're like everything that nick says make sure your stringer is on and uh, make sure it's tethered to your, your kayak and make sure that before you take any instagram facebook photos or facebook live yourself or anything like that make sure it's secure on your kayak okay yep. that's the end game all right i think that's it right nick oh here's some recommended terminal tackle yeah, go uh, recently, I, yeah, uh, recently, I've been using um, a QI fishing rod and they, they've been sponsoring me for some of the stuff. And so I, I really like the rod, not just because they're sponsoring me because I actually like it quite a lot. Um, and it's because it's a seven foot salmon rod and it has a fast action tip. And so what happens is that as, as the salmon is loading to that, uh, to, that, to that, and they're biting, right? That, that fast action tip just kind of lets it take it and it's been setting that hook really well. So on, on the last four salmon I've caught, I've only lost one. And I think that's just on a bad hook set. And that's something I stopped peddling or something. But, um, but I've been using this, this rod. It's called the QI uh, Rock Jigger 710. And it's really been worked out for me really well. I use it with these owner no escape hooks. And I think Moo gave me some of these no escape hooks. And between this one and this one, it's like, it's been solid for me, guys. I mean, but I mean, I'm not, you know, that's just what I've been using. 
uh, 20 to 30 pound fluoro on our mono leader and SCS salmon leader. I think this, this, this brand SCS salmon leader is super cheap and it works. So that's why I think I recommend that. And I think this combination has been pretty good for me. Um, uh, I use an Avid MXJ, but that's just what I use. I know there's lots and lots of, I think Moon uses, uh, what does Moon use, um, Carlos? Moon Alexa. Uses, uh, uh, I think he's got Alexa. Cabello. Alexa, right? Alexa, right? Yeah, he's got the 300, I think. Yeah, I use Alexa. That works pretty well for him too. Um, remember large salmon nets, 35 to 40 inch diameter. If you can find a bigger one, use a bigger one. Um, terminal tackle, crippled anchovy, FBR, RSK, straight bait, watermelon apex. You know, this is kind of the salmon, you know, terminal tackle that everybody uses. Any, any ideas on anything else on this, Nick? Yeah, this, this setup that Keith has on the, on the slide here is great. You know, you got your seven foot, 10 medium, fast action, fast action rod, heavy medium rod. 30 pound, 20 pound fluoro. Uh, I really like the, the use of the lever drag reel here. I'll use star drag. I'm gonna switch to lever drag any day now. Cool. All right, so we have like about 10 minutes left and I, I wanna give some time for Q and A, but I wanna show you guys a few things. All right, uh, here, I wanna show this, you this video of me fighting this fish and I wanna run over some of this thing. So I've been fighting this fish, right? And I've gotten on board you can see, can you guys see this right now, right? Yep. Oh, it's not ready. You see, the, the fish is not ready. It's kind of just swimming next to me. But you can see as I'm trying to pull it up, it's just like fighting and it's not ready. Even if I'm reaching for it, it you can see it's still fighting, right? And so a leader may be a long time looking. It's just running at me. So that's what you, these are the things you kind of have to expect when you're fighting a salmon. Okay. And you know, I'm leading it. I'm just testing it. I know it's not ready. But I'm just trying to scare it to make it run. And so it does. All right. So it won't give up. And here's the thing. I'm going to show it to the minute. I'm going to show you. Okay, see at that particular point right here, this is where you may lose that fish. Mm -hmm. See how his skin close right now? And it looks like it's about to go in. At this point, like anything you can can hit with that, that net right there and break you off. So you got to be very careful at this particular point, okay? So I know it's not ready yet and it runs. And so I push my net down and I let it go because I don't want anything tangled in there. Okay, and when it's finally ready to come in, watch. See it? It's running towards the net, and it's just I just go boom. Boom. Right. When it's ready, it's gonna pretty much go in by itself. You see, you see, you see the difference, guys. When 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 that happens, that's why you have to be a little. And this is a really big fish. This is probably about thirty-five inch fish. And so I took a lot of time fighting that fish. So I'm waiting for it to come into me when it's ready. And it, when it was ready, I came in. And when I knew it potentially could could get stuck on that net, I pushed it down and I let it do its thing. So these are things I've learned through the years. I'm letting you guys know about it. Okay. All right. Um, that's it. And I'm going to leave open for Q and A right now. So there's about seven or eight minutes left. So you guys jump in, uh, ask me, me and Nick any questions you guys want. I'll ask first question. Um, and so I saw a lot of time you guys always navigate kayak, move back and forth. So you want fish? Let's say you're, you're right-handed and your fishing pole is on the left side, you're reeling with left hand. Where do you want your fish? Way on the back, on the, more to the left from kayak, or how do you approach that? Do you want to answer this one, or you want me to? Uh, I would you know, try to keep it straight behind you and keep, keep forward momentum and keep the fish straight behind you. Well, that's if that, you have a pedal kayak. That's if you have yeah. a pedal kayak. That's if you have a pedal kayak, for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's what I'm referring to. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I see you always like one hand is on a, a ruder trying to navigate kayak right or left. Yeah. Uh, I see. Yeah. So if the fish turns to the left, I'm gonna maybe move the kayak in the opposite direction so the fish stays straight behind me. Got it. Thank you. Cool. Oh, I want one thing I also want to put is that um, some people high stick a fish like this. And I, I noticed that, that, you know, you can lose a fish that way. So make sure that as you're fighting it, you kind of keep the, 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 the stick in your ear here. I actually, if you look at my videos, I keep it very low. And there's a reason why I do that. Okay, I'll tell, I, I can cover that next time. Uh, any other questions? So on a paddle kayak, uh, what's kind of the game plan for that? I know you said paddle kayak, you want to keep the fish behind you. But if you're fighting a fish and you got to put your paddle down, what's the, what's the game plan for that? Hmm. Uh, so, for a paddle, or I'll answer this yeah. one, Nick. For a paddle no kayak, point. I think 
you just want to um, continually keep pressure on that fish. That's all you okay. can do. You just yeah. like anywhere it's gonna know, you just have to fight it and just try to keep it. If it's gonna around the bow, you have to reach over the bow, and if it's behind you, here, right? But okay. no matter what, just keep that pressure on that fish until it tires out. And that's all okay. you can really do from a paddle kayak, right? You're just yeah. along for the ride. You're in for the ride. And I think that's more challenging <laughs> personally from a paddle kayak. I don't know if my yeah. friend Eric is here. Is Eric Loletta, are you here? Or Eddie, Eddie can help with that too. Is Eddie here, Eddie? I don't know, one of those guys, they're paddle people. Um, yeah, I guess they're not here. So yeah, so it, all I say, you just go for the ride and keep that tension on that hook, man. That's all I can tell you. Sounds good. Okay, anything else? Anybody else? Netting. Go ahead. What about gaffing versus netting? Gaffing is legal, um, right? Net? No, gaffing I, is legal. I looked, I couldn't find anything that said you couldn't gaff, but I've also never, never heard or seen people try to gaff a salmon. So I'm not really sure, yeah. Uh, um, I uh, think, I, I, from what I've known, or like I've, I've gone through it, it's like, it's legal to gaff, but you have to make sure it's a king salmon. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that's probably why nobody's gaffing salmon because you got to make sure it's the right yeah, kind of salmon. You have to make sure, and the only way you can do it is you have to kind of look up close to the salmon to check its gums. It was black; it's more likely it's the king salmon. And on my on our web page, underneath the king salmon tutorials, it will tell you like uh, how to identify a king salmon. Okay, so more likely not net a fish before you can, can gaff it. You know, just just do it. I think to be on the safe side. Okay, but I think it is legal to gaff it though. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Do you, guys target, do you guys target certain tides or periods of the day for salmon? Hmm. I think they, they like to bite during tide changes. Like most fish, they, they bite during tide changes. So as, as you know, as you, know you, you have your slack tides, right? And, and the, thing, the funny thing I've been fishing over the years is that, is that sometimes it's a morning bite, right? It's a super morning bite, and sometimes it's not. So if it's a morning bite, go for the morning bite. And people will tell you where well, they're all kind of waiting for it. But usually I think during tide changes, they will start to pick up again, just like a, a, any other fish. So look at that tide change. Whenever it's about to change, that's when most likely if they're going to be feeding, they're going to be around and they're going to be feeding. Okay. Other questions? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, it seems like most people troll from kayaks. How about mooching? Okay. Nick, you want to jump with this one or you want me to jump with this one? Yeah, I'll start it out. Yeah, mooching works. We we tried mooching a few times. We'll probably, you know, start to try it a little more often when we find, like, very large, dense bait balls. Um, a couple of weeks ago, Keith Keith got a nice big hit on the mooch. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Stick, but, it, it, you know, that was definitely a salmon bite. So mooching yeah. works. Yeah, but it, mostly when you see, like, bait activity or... Like, yeah, yeah, around big I bait balls. Around yeah, big they don't have trolling rig or anything so i don't have a yeah. uh remember on the mooch you have to use uh, on the mooch if you're specifically staying still you have to use circle hooks okay yeah. but what i do is i do a trooch which is basically i'm moving <laughs> like, which is the fish is kind of looking <laughs> like this right so technically i don't have to use circle hooks right and which is you yeah. know by legal legality i am in i am in the clear and it works it works extremely well the only reason i've been trolling lately is because of the, the hook set because when I'm yeah. trolling, I'm moving, and when that fish bites, and then that hook set is like solid. So that's why yeah. I'm trolling. But mooching yeah. completely works. I've worked, I've yeah. done it multiple times. Yeah, when, when mooching, just make sure you have some line angle. If it's, if it's vertical, you will get tangled. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've never tried it, so mm -hmm. that's my option. Works. <laughs> there's, some, there's some nice videos on YouTube uh, that get more into deep depth about like how to mooch and the technique. Uh. Okay, so I okay. think that's it. I think we're out of time here, guys. I appreciate you. I, I'm not, these are mini seminars. You know, I'll, I'll post this online and you guys have an opportunity to, to read, read all my slides and watch this video again, okay? So I appreciate you guys being here. I hope this helps. Go get a big fish this weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay, so if you guys enjoyed these videos, make sure to smash the like button, share, and subscribe. You can also find my tutorials blog at www.thelastanchovy.com. So good luck. Tight lines. See you later.